And welcome to the Cult Cinema Circle podcast. My name is Jesse, and I'll be your host. So on today's episode, we're going to go over what I watched in the month of October of 2023. So I watched so much this month, really. Um, I watched at least over 60 titles. Um, I watched some things that were not horror as well, um, but that's generally what I did uh, this month. So I was participating in two different um, challenges. I was doing the Horror Queers October Watch calendar, which they put out a calendar every year, and they say on each day of October, watch a different category of movie. So I'll go over what those were. But then also I went and I was doing Haunted Hippie, um, Kylie from YouTube. Go check out her channel. She has great like um, original versus remake videos. She also has like director deep dives and just a really cool chick. Um, really, really good uh, type of content. But she had an October like watch list challenge, so she put out uh, she actually put out a video about it, and so every day of the month, uh, she had a different thing she would watch. So yeah, I mean, I'll just go through a little bit of what I watched during the month of this, um, and I watched a few things like I said that weren't horror as well. Um, so you know, we'll we'll just get it, get it moving, get it started. Um, so on the first of the month, I ended up watching a little movie for uh, day one of Haunted Hippies Challenge, which was a movie set in fall. And I watched uh, Sleepy Hollow from 1999. So this is directed by Tim Burton, and it's uh, New York detective Ichabod Crane is sent to Sleepy Hollow to invest a series, investigate a series of mysterious deaths in which the victims were found beheaded, but the locals believe the culprit to be none other than the ghost of the legendary Headless Horseman. Um, so this stars Christina Ricci and Johnny Depp and all sorts of different people. And so I gave this like a three and a half. I said it was like a fun ride. I haven't seen all of Tim Burton's films by any means, but I do think this was a really fun time and I did enjoy it uh, for the most part. You know, I just thought it was like real, uh, you know, fall vibes type shit, you know, and uh, that was cool. So that's what I began my watch with. And it was also streaming so I could watch it pretty easily. Then the next movie I watched was uh, for the horror queers. I did uh, Italian movie. So this was, of course, uh, I chose 1977's Suspiria because it is currently on Criterion right now. Um, it's really pretty and beautiful, of course. Uh, so yeah, I mean, all I could say about this movie, I gave it a four and a half. Um, Suspiria, if you don't know, is about um, a girl named Susie Banyan, who's an American who goes to Germany, and um, she's attending this like uh, tense academy. It's like a dance academy, and then some shit's going wrong pretty much um and yeah i mean all i said is just in my letterbox review i said maggots velvet walls witches outfits red blood ballet <laughs> i mean it's just a certain vibes to me um i really like suspiria personally so i'm very much about that and so, of course, I decided to... This is also a rewatch for me. I've watched it before. Uh, and I, I generally tried to watch things I hadn't watched before. But again, you know, uh, whatever. I did some rewatches as well. So for the second day, I watched a little movie uh, for a back-to-school film, uh, which was for Haunted Hippie. And so that was... I decided on uh, The Loved Ones from 2009. So The Loved Ones is an Australian horror movie. So there's a girl named Lola who asked this guy Brent to the prom, but he he said no and so what happens is that uh pretty much what happens is that lola kidnaps brent and brings her him back to her house where there's some crazy shit that goes down um and all of this and uh yeah i mean the loved ones that's pretty much what it is for me i only gave this like a two and a half i didn't love it really um I said I thought it was aggressively fine. I go between a two and a half or a three. I normally really like Australian films, but this wasn't really for me, though. Because um, I do love, like, um, like Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, and Meryl's Wedding. I love those movies. Um, and I think Australian, you know, media is just really fun. But, like, this one, for me, I just wasn't really all that into. I didn't care about it that much. So, I don't know. I probably wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but that's just me personally. Um, but I'm glad I finally watched it because I'd heard so much about it. And so I just wanted to, to get that off my list. Uh, then for the other day, uh, for the other challenge, I watched a movie with babies. 
um, so why not? Um, and uh, I decided to go with a, a Cronenberg movie, uh, 1979's The Brood. Uh, and I just said, hell yes, just hell yes. Um, so if you don't know The Brood, The Brood is about a man who is trying to uh, uncover an unconventional psychologist therapy techniques uh, with his wife that they're about to separate. Um, and then these brutal attacks happened. Um and yeah, it's it's a crazy fucking movie, dude. Um, you know, I won't spoil anything too too much, but yeah, the brood is just like fucking crazy. It's a Cronenberg movie, so very much body horror. Um, but I really I liked it. I gave it a four, I gave it a little heart. I just thought it was really decent and I thought it was like pretty pretty good. Uh and this movie is very well known for like the the kill scenes in it and also the ending as well. Um but I, I would it's a weird movie, but if you're into that, go go check it out for sure. Then for the third day, I chose two different movies. So one was a comfort horror movie. Uh, and so I went with a, a little movie that I have talked about before. It is called the Rocky Horror Picture Show from 1975. This is, there's no uh, description for this. You know, of course, this is about Brad and Janet. They get stuck in a, uh, a storm. They go to this uh a mansion castle thing that is owned by Dr. Frankenfurter and then hilarity ensues after that. I mean, this movie is a five star movie for me. Um, it's a comfort horror film. I mean, really? Cause I, I only have so many comfort horror films really, but uh, this one definitely is for me and I completely consider it a horror film. So yeah, it was just nice to be able to watch this. <laughs> it was really, really, really nice. Um, so yeah, that's what I watched for that. And then for the, um, the other movie I watched was from the twenties. So I guess you could take that as whether it was in the 1920s or the 2020s, but I took it as the 1920s. Um, so there's only so many movies you really could choose from, from this, but I decided to watch a little movie called the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, which is like a very well-known horror film. Um, pretty much Francis, a young man. He recalls in his memory, um, these experiences that him and his fiance Jane had, um, and they visit the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, which is an exhibit where this mysterious doctor uh, shows the somnambulist, which is a sleepwalker, uh, Caesar, and they awaken him for some moments uh, from his death-like sleep. Uh, that's, that's what Letterbox tells me. But anyway, so um, yeah, t- the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, it's definitely a... Um, it's a classic for sure. Um, I'm not much into silent films, but the influence that this movie has had on horror is very noted. And also the visuals are also really striking. And they also have remade this movie before. Um, I'm pretty sure it's in the public domain now by now. So it probably is, but uh, you know, it's, it's a German film as well. Um, das Kabinett des uh, Dr. Caligari. Uh, and it's by Robert Wayne or Wien, um, who is a German silent filmmaker. Um, but yeah, Doctor uh, Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, it was cool. Um, it's like pretty short too. I think it was only like 78 minutes. Uh, and maybe if anything, maybe if you want to check out one of the little remakes they've done, you can find one on Tubi I found. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's worth a watch um, if you're a horror person. And why the hell not, you know? And, and um, there's also other movies out there of course uh, i would give other recommendations as well and, and they're in my letterbox stuff i did do a few of those uh but yeah i mean i'm not gonna go through all that it would be take forever <laughs> but um but that was the third day so on the fourth day i decided to watch um a little movie uh for vampires uh, as the category and so i watched uh 1931's dracula uh because it was on um, Prime, I believe. So I said, this is a fun classic, uh, Bella Lugosi. Uh, and the actress playing Mina is really good. Um, I give this a three and a half and a little star. So, vamp- I mean, obviously this is about a vampire named Dracula. Um, so he's preying on young socialite women. And then uh, Dr. Abraham Van Helsing, he's going after him to, you know, uh, kill Dracula. There's Jonathan Harker in there, all that kind of stuff. Um, I did an episode on Bram Stoker's Dracula from 1992 with Donovan Marcotte. So, you know, go check that out, I guess. But this is universal horror. Um, you know, it's one of the first sound films that they did as well it's todd browning um but yeah i mean that was definitely vampires i wanted to get get around to that really um then the next movie i watched was uh for a movie that scares you is what that was now for me i don't get freaked out by movies a ton um but i will say that 
there may be a few that uh, can do it for me. And so I went with um, 2017's Gerald's Game from Mike Flanagan. Uh, it's on Netflix. And uh, this movie is really good. Uh, so it's when a husband's sex game goes wrong. Jesse, hey, um, who is handcuffed to a bed in a remote lake house, uh, faces warped visions, dark secrets, and a dire choice. Um, so again, this is on Netflix. It's Mike Flanagan. And personally, I really like this um, film. Uh, I gave it a four. Um it does scare me. I remember when I first watched it a couple years ago now, but I watched it and I remember because there's this creature in it called the Midnight Man, you know, uh, not to spoil anything too much, but it, this is also a Stephen King adaptation. But uh, when I first saw him, when I watched it a couple years ago, I had all the lights off and I watched it and I saw him like he comes up like 35 minutes into the movie. Right. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to turn the lights on because I don't want to have a nightmare. Um, so that's why this scared me before. And it's still really freaky to watch sometimes. Um, I wasn't as scared by the guy um, who actually, fun little fact, he, uh, the guy who's the Midnight Man in this movie, he actually played Lurch um, in the, I think, Adam's Family movies uh, from the early 90s, funny enough. Um, this also has, like, um, what was his name? Bruce Greenwood, uh, Carla... Um, Gugino, I think, who's the mom from the Spy Kids movies. Uh, Henry Thomas, who's an E.T., he's also in it as well. Um, but yeah, I, I really liked this movie personally. Um, I thought it was really good. It has some good gore effects, you know, and it's just really unsettling. It has a very atmospheric. So I, I, I liked um, I liked that for a movie that scares me, because it did scare me before. Um, so I was really into that. Then for the fifth day, I chose um, for the category of splatter, um, I chose Evil Dead 2 from 1987. So this movie I gave like four stars and a little heart. Uh, if you don't already know, this is the sequel slash sort of a remake of the Evil Dead from 1981, I believe. Um, so Ash Williams, played by Bruce Campbell, and his girlfriend Linda, they go to a log cabin and then they unleash the uh, demons from a the book of the dead and they got these deadites and stuff, stuff like that i mean you know you can go all into the evil dead lore but this is directed by sam raimi um and i had never i watched the original evil dead um and i also have another evil dead movie on on deck as well for what i watched but uh i did end up watching this one i i liked it you know it's it's splatter it's like dark comedy um and I'm into that kind of thing. So, yeah, it was definitely a good Splatter film to watch. Um, but that's what I chose to, to watch for Splatter. And then the next movie I watched was for the category of stop motion. And so for stop motion, I chose a movie that I had only ever really heard of, but I haven't watched yet. Um, and that was Coraline from 2009. Um, so this movie, if you don't already know, it's based off of a book, uh, but when Coraline moves to this old house with her parents, um, she feels bored and neglected by her parents and she finds this hidden door that takes her to this other, like, um, kind of a parallel world really where everyone has buttons for eyes. And then it's pretty much a, you know, it, it, everything goes from there. It's a stop motion movie. It's directed by Henry Selick, who's the same guy who did a Na uh, the night before Christmas um, and James and the giant peach and all that. But this was in 2009 and I really, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I thought it was just such a good, um, yeah, I just thought it was a good like uh, movie and good stop motion film as well. Um, <laughs> my, my understanding of it before was that, uh, our, our good old friend Barbie uh, from the Jurassic Park episode. She has a daughter and her daughter also uh, watched this movie when she was like younger and she's like eight or nine now or something like that. But uh, <laughs> I don't know if Barbie really liked this movie that much. <laughs> Cause yeah, it's a little, it's a little weird, but, um, but it's, it's a freaky little movie. It's a fun little kids horror movie. I think it's, it's a good way of kind of priming the children. If they're in spooky things like, you know, they can watch Coraline and, and also it's a book too. So you can also tie it into that as well. Um, but yeah, that's what I watched for, for stop motion. Then the next day, uh, I watched two movies, of course. Um, so I watched a made for TV film, 
which was I decided to watch Ghost Watch from 1992. Um, so this is a movie. It was in the UK. It's a made-for-TV thing. Um, so the BBC decides to broadcast an investigation into the supernatural. Um, and so they uh, this crew goes to a house that has poltergeist activity, pretty much. And uh, then some shit goes down, pretty much. Um this was this has a, a distinct uh, pleasure of being something that really affected uh, the BBC and also just the United Kingdom, where people really thought that this was real because um, it felt like it was uh, a little bit like War of the Worlds, if you will. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, um, or even kind of like it's not the same as like Blair Witch, obviously. It is, it's not, but you know, um, it, it very much is this like newscast. Um, it's it's framed that way and everything like that. And so, and people apparently were like calling the BBC back in the day and being like, oh my God, like this is crazy, blah, blah, blah. And so I, I, um, I watched this on my phone because I could only find it on the internet archive. I think, um, it was streaming for a minute on Tubi, but then it went away. So I, I didn't realize it went away. So anyway, I had to watch it on my phone. I tried casting it to the TV, but it didn't really work very well. So I just watched it on the phone and it was fine. You know, um, but I gave it a three and a half and a little heart. I think it is such a cool little early nineties film. Um, obviously it's from the UK, so it's from different where I live. Um, and I just thought it was like a really decent watch and I, I wanted to end up watching it. Um, and I'm glad I did. I, I could see what kind of the, the deal was about it. So that's what I watched. And then on, uh, and then on, uh, that it was a Friday, I think. Uh, so I watched a movie that was two hours or longer as what I had to watch. And so I decided to finally get around to watch mother from 2017. This movie has Jennifer Lawrence in it. It has, um, wasn't it Javier Bardem? Yes. Um, and a couple other people like Michelle Pfeiffer's in it, Ed Harris, all that stuff. Um, this movie is about a couple's uh, relationship is tested when these uninvited guests arrive at their home, uh, disrupting their tranquil existence. This is a Darren Aronofsky film. So he's the same guy who did Black Swan, Requiem for a Dream, all that kind of stuff. So he's very um, about having unsettling cinema. So I watched this. I give it a three. Um, I don't care to watch it again. Maybe um, it's very heavy handed. Obviously. I mean, the thing is, is that uh, Jennifer Lawrence's character who's named mother and then the guy named father um, very much like um, mother is very much about mother nature. Father is very much an allegory for, you know, a kind of a symbol for God and all of this kind of stuff. So I don't know. It's very, uh, a little art housey, obviously, you know, definitely for that. Um, and at some point, I, I don't love Aronofsky films necessarily. I haven't watched Black Swan in a long time, and I I, re I watched Requiem for a Dream, which is also kind of fucked up. But like, I uh, yeah, this is two hours or longer, so I definitely had to make a point to be like, okay, I guess I gotta watch this. Um, but yeah, I. It was fine for what it was, but I wouldn't maybe watch it again personally. That's just me, but you know, do you do you, I guess, but that's what I watched, uh, finally getting around to that. Then the next day, which was a weekend, I watched three movies. So one was a movie with a haunted object, which was, um, I watched death spa from 1988. Uh, this movie is about a guy named Michael who owns a health club and, um, there's a bunch of terrible murders that happened, uh, including like killer saunas and other grisly devices. So his, uh, wife who was killed um she killed herself by you know uh, self-emolulating burning herself up and uh yeah pretty much he has to, like stop this shit going on and this movie is wild it's from 1988 like i said and it is crazy it's a kind of crazy 80s movie the the haunted uh, object in this was a haunted computer i think so that's what i used it for but yeah, no, I, I liked it. I gave it three and a half and a little heart. If you like 80s horror films, and if you kind of like that cheesy 80s horror, if you will, I would give this a watch. Um, It's on Shudder, so you can definitely watch that. It's wild. It's so fucking weird. Um, and there's some cool people in it, like Brenda Backey is in it, who I'll talk about in a, a later movie. Um, but she's in it. Uh, Ken Ferre is in this movie as well, our MVP for uh, 80s horror. Uh 
But yeah, and there's also kind of like a queer coded character in this movie too, which I thought was kind of fun for the time and why the hell not? So yeah, that's what I watched for um, a movie with a haunted object. Then I watched um, a film that was female directed and some of these overlap as well. So I will just say that um, because I do have another female directed movie as well. But anyway, for this film, I watched a movie called Ravenous from 1999. This was directed by Antonia Bird. Um, and pretty much what it's about, it's about um, these guys who were on this um, kind of military f- base uh, back in like the olden, olden, olden days. Um, and so pretty much what happens is that this captain uh, investigates what's going on um, and some crazy shit has gone down pretty much. It's kind of, um, Western horror, if you will. Um, it's also very, it's a little homoerotic as well, which is fun. Um, and yeah, it's just fucking crazy, dude. And it's, it's, um, it's a wild movie. It, it, you know, I would go into it and I definitely enjoyed it personally. Um, I gave it a four. I would maybe own this movie. Um, like I said, there's some gay little subtext things going on a little bit. Um, you got some hot men in here too. You have like Guy Pierce is in it. Robert Carlyle, uh, you know, Jeffrey Jones is in this movie. Blech. Um, he was in sleepy hollow too. So, ugh. Anyway, but yeah, so uh, it was directed by a woman. So I and it was on Criterion Channel. So um, because they have a whole 90s horror thing that they were doing this month. So I I took advantage of some of those. Um, But yeah, I would definitely watch Ravenous. I thought it was a a good little movie. I would maybe do on the show as well um, as its own standalone episode because, yeah, I really liked it. And it kind of went over the radar as well. Uh, and then the next movie I watched uh, on that same Saturday, I watched uh, because it had just come out, was VHS 85. Um, so this is, of course, uh, the VHS films. Uh, there's like f- six of them now or something like that. Some crazy shit. Um, I gave this a three, personally. Um, I thought it was perfectly fine. Uh, so it's like these different stories. Um, and they all take place in like the mid eighties, I guess, uh, from what I can gather, see and gather, um, uh, and it's found footage. So, I mean, you know, there's not anything too crazy about it. I mean, I think a lot of these movies really start to kind of, uh, a lot of these movies are starting to, um, blend together for me at some point, And they're going to make another one as of course as well. Cause people will fucking watch it. Um, and I'm just like, I'm getting tired at this point of these movies. <laughs> Um, I mean, again, like, fine, whatever, but I just, I don't, mm. uh, whatever. It's, it, uh, this one was fine. I really do think it was fine. Um, I maybe liked 94 a little bit better, but I always would love, like, VHS 2, personally. Like, I thought that movie was really good. Um, we don't talk about viral, but, like, you know. Uh, but I do tend to like these movies, but they are kind of, uh, running together for me. <laughs> So that's just that. But um, then uh, the next day I watched a little movie. Uh, it was a movie set in the forest. So I watched Dog Soldiers from 2002. So this movie is a werewolf movie. Um, it's a squad of British soldiers who are in the Scottish wilderness. Um, and they uh, encounter this zoologist named Megan, who's this woman. And they go to like this uh, kind of random house in the woods kind of or in the middle of nowhere um but a lot of this does take place in the forest as well um there's definitely some forest scenes and uh obviously like the house is surrounded by forest so uh but yeah it's it's like a pretty good movie it was f- i gave it a four and I gave it a little heart um definitely a a fun little werewolf movie as well um I, I liked it i thought it was very decent and uh i would recommend it for sure if you're at all interested in werewolf movies or anything like that i would definitely say uh, i think if i would give it a watch it's worth your time uh for sure and then the next movie i watched was for a korean movie and i decided to watch train to busan uh from 2016 because i had not gotten around to finishing it i started it at one point and then i turned it off uh, not because I hated it or anything. It was just literally because I just turned it off. <laughs> I don't know. I just was tired. Anyway, so then uh, what this is about is is about um, it's a zombie movie pretty much from Korea. Um, 
so this viral outbreak uh, pushes Korea into a state of uh, emergency, and then pretty much all these people are stuck onto a train, like a bullet train, um, and so they gotta like make their way fucking out, dude. And there's a lot to be said for this movie. There's a lot of people who love it. I am also one of them. I really liked it. I gave it a five. Personally, I I thought that it did a great job with being this like uh, zombie movie, but also I just really I liked the characters. I thought they were really interesting and uh, really dynamic, and I I really enjoyed them personally. So I do think Train to Busan. Yes, you could say it's overhyped or whatever, but I do think it's worth a hype. Um, I think this movie is really cool, and it was 2016 that they did this, so I I can really appreciate and enjoy what they were doing with that for sure. Uh, then the next movie I watched um, was uh, a movie that is starring your favorite villain. Now, my favorite villain, I would probably say, uh, I mean, I could have done Freddy, but like, also, I am a huge fan of Leatherface. He's my sweet boy, and I love him. So I decided to watch a, a Texas Chainsaw movie, uh, also because I am going to be covering the Texas Chainsaw franchise at some point uh, that is in the works. So I had to watch a um, Texas Chainsaw movie. Uh, so I decided to watch that. And um, yeah, and this movie I decided to watch was the 2003 Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the remake. Uh, my sister also watched this this month as well um, <laughs> because we were texting and I was like, and I was like, yeah, girl, you should watch that. She was watching some scary movies uh, this month. And I, I like this movie more than I would have thought. I At one point, I don't think I was just like, oh, okay, like I'm not really into it, right? Um, I have my gripes with it, but I do think it's a decent remake and it's something different. Um, so, yeah, I do like this movie. If you don't know the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, pretty much these kids uh, pick up a hitchhiker, something happens, and then they uh, get turned into meat sacks, okay? That's pretty much what it is. Uh, this is from 2003, so, I mean, yeah. I Sadly enough, I it's hard to find this movie, um, like, you know, physical media and all that, but I do want to find it at some point. I would like to own it. Um because I should build up my Texas Chainsaw, like, uh, my little collection or something. I should probably get one of those. <laughs> but anyway, so, yeah. And I just thought it was a really decent remake, honestly. Um, so, it wasn't mad at it. It was on HBO. It was on Max. So, that's cool. But, yeah. So, that's what I watched. And then the next movie I watched... Um, was for the um it was for the category of scary kid so i decided to watch a movie i'd never seen before and i watched pet cemetery from to, uh, 1989 uh, directed by mary lambert i gave this a three and a little heart um overall i did like this movie for the most part i thought that fred gwynn was really good um and miko hughes uh, as a little boy was really good and then also pascal i thought they were really good and they were really good actors because the lead actor is really not that good and i also said the end credit theme song is a, a sort of a banger because it is um if you don't know what pet cemetery is it's a stephen king adaptation um lewis creed and his family lewis creed and his family moved to a um country house um they end up finding this pet cemetery that's like near their house although it's not really near their house but like uh that pretty much can bring things back to life if you bury something there um some things go down um and then uh, horror ensues pretty much um yeah i mean it's a stephen king adaptation like i said um it's from 1989 i i did like it enough um, again, I don't think I would maybe own it, but I thought it was fine. I had never seen it before. So I wanted to get that out of the way to, to watch it. Cause again, I wanted to watch things I hadn't really watched before yet. So that was a nice little, um, that was a nice little nod to that. Anyway, the next day I watched a movie, um, it was a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. It was the category. And so of course I went back and I just watched the original, the Nightmare on Elm Street, pretty much, from 1984. Um, if you don't know what this movie is about, it's about Nancy Thompson, who, for me, is my favorite final girl, personally. But um, Nancy Thompson, her friends, uh, they're in Elm Street, and some shit's going down with like some mysterious-ass deaths that are happening while people are sleeping, and they find out about Freddy Krueger. 
Okay. So that's pretty much what it is. The Wes Craven movie. Um, I gave this a four and a half and a star. Again, I don't, uh, or a little part. I don't own this, but I probably should because, um, I mean, I, I love this, uh, I love this movie personally, and I I do tend to like the series of the movies. Uh, they're not all great necessarily. However, there are a few of them that are really good. I was actually going to watch Dream Warriors, but I decided against it. I just I decided to watch the original. I'm very happy I did. Um, but yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Decided to watch that. And the next movie I watched uh, was a movie from the 50s. So, um, <laughs> and in this movie, I, oh, this category, I decided to watch uh, 1954's Godzilla from Japan. Um, so, I mean, Japan is thrown into a panic after there's some, like, ships that were wrecked on, um, you know, at sea. And then we find out that there is this, like, 50 meter tall monster that people call um, Gojira or Godzilla. Um, and yeah, Godzilla's just coming back and whooping everyone's ass pretty much. Um, I love Godzilla. I think he's such a sweet boy. I really like him. <laughs> I said, um, so I started this movie on a Tuesday. Okay. So that, that happened a couple times, uh, where I was just tired. So like I started this on a Tuesday and I finished it on a Saturday <laughs> because I was just tired, dude. Um, yeah, they were kicking my ass. And so, yeah, just watching these two a days was kind of, you know, taking a lot out of me. But I did end up finishing it, which was good. So I do count that. Um, with that being said, though, I love my sweet dino boy. I love him a lot. Um, I would also let the dude with the eye patch uh, pound me. No questions asked. Um, sorry, that was disgusting. But it's true, though. Um yeah, that guy was really hot. Who was he? Uh, yeah, um, Sarazawa. Oh my god, he was so hot. But anyway, so yes, I loved him. Um, you know, Godzilla. Go fucking watch it, dude. Don't watch King of the Monsters though, because apparently it's just a weird ass like recut movie uh, with Raymond Burr in it. Although Raymond Burr is a homosexual, or he was a homosexual, so that's cool. But uh, uh but uh, watch the original one. It's on Max. You can watch it pretty easily. So I would recommend that personally. Um, but yeah, uh, and I, I was, I watched Godzilla before or no, I didn't watch it before I started watching it. And I gave up on it. So then I went back and watched it again. So I was like, okay, good. Anyway. So then the next day I decided to watch a movie. It was, uh, the category was werewolf. And so I decided to, um, do myself a favor and finish up a series that I had been <laughs> meaning to watch. Uh, and that was, uh, I decided to watch Ginger Snaps Back, the beginning from 2004, which is the third movie in the Ginger Snaps trilogy. Um, so yeah, again, this movie was another one where I started it on Wednesday and I finished it on a Friday. That seems about right. Um, yeah, this movie, uh, so it's set in 19th century Canada, Bridget, played by Emily Perkins, and her sister Ginger, um, played by Catherine Isbell. Um, they take refuge at a trader's fort, um, and then some shit happens, and then, you know, whatever the hell. I didn't care for this movie that much. Um, I actually now own the Ginger Snaps movie um, on Blu-ray, which is really cool. I really like that movie. Um, I think it's a great werewolf film. It's my favorite werewolf film, really. But I... Uh, meh. This third, and I even like the second one quite a bit. The second one was actually pretty dope. Uh, it was pretty cool. This third one, I just didn't care for it. I gave it two and a half stars. And honestly, just watch the first two films. I think you'll get enough out of them. You know what I mean? And uh, and there you go. So, but this is another one I, I couldn't necessarily finish because I was tired. But anyway, so then, um, then I got back on track though, because then I watched a uh, little movie from uh, a movie that was starring my crush. Um, now I have a couple of crushes now, but uh, my original crush that I had uh, is the one and only David Crumholtz. Um, and he has not really been in a whole lot of horror movies, but I was able to find a movie uh, Adam's Daily values from 1993 that has him in it. Um, I have seen this movie before. I gave it a five star because I love this movie a lot. Um, I also watch this for podcast purposes because I will be covering it soon. Um, Adam's Family Values is the sequel to the Adam's Family movie that came out in 1991. Um, pretty much the, the Adams, their family, they have a baby named Pebert. Um, and uh, then the kids get sent 
uh, Wednesday and Pugsley, they get sent to a camp. Um, <laughs> and then there's uh, this babysitter named Debbie Jelinski who comes in. It's a whole crazy mess um, of a movie, but it's an amazing mess of a movie, though. It's so very campy and fun. Um, it has David Crumholtz in it, so that already gives it something good. Um, but yeah, I really liked it personally, and I'm glad I was able to watch it for both podcast purposes and also the purposes of this challenge. Um, but yeah, that's what I watched. Um, so that was day 11. I think that was a weekend um, that I watched that. And so then also, in addition to this, um, I watched something that was completely not, um, you know, horror related. Um, I watched a movie from uh, Amazon. It was a documentary and it's called Mr. Dress Up, The Magic of Make Believe. Um, so this movie, it just came out on Amazon. Um I gave it four stars in a heart, and I pretty much said, uh, where does this documentary about Canadian uh, Mr. Rogers get off making me cry? Because, um, girl, I did I did cry, actually. So this movie is about a um, gentleman uh, named Ernie Coombs. Um, he ended up becoming this children's television icon that is Mr. Dress Up in Canada, um, similar to... Um, Mr. Rogers in America and really all over the place. But uh, he and Fred Rogers actually uh, were friends and knew each other. And he actually worked for him before. Um, And actually Fred Rogers really uh, kind of referred Ernie for the job really. Um, And it ended up making his whole goddamn life. Um, And I, I wasn't necessarily, well, I'm not Canadian, so I don't know these things. So, but I had been familiar with him uh, just because I remember, if anybody knows who um, Lunette from The Big Comfy Couch is, uh, Allison Court, um, she uh, is an actress. She's a voiceover person. Um, but she did uh, Lunette from The Big Comfy Couch, but she's also the voice of Claire Redfield from the Resident Evil video games and stuff like that. But she was on Mr. Dress Up as like a teenager. Um, so, like pretty much I was familiar uh, of that from hearing her talk in an interview about it, which was really cool. Um, but I was like, what the hell is that? And whatever. And that's how I kind of found out a little bit about who he was. And then they made this whole documentary about him. And actually it was really cool. I was really, um, yeah, girl, it's like really emotional. It talks about him and his life and people from the show and like all that kind of stuff. And, and how it was such a big deal, you know? And, um, and yeah, I, I thought it was really cool. It was very accessible. It was really positive. It was really nice. Um, so yeah, it was nice to to wash off all that darkness I was I was watching. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> as if the Adam's Family Values is like super dark or whatever. But yeah, anyway. So then um, the next day I watched a movie. Again, it was a movie from the 50s is what I watched. Because again, the category for... Um, Haunted Hippie was for that. Um, so there's some overlap for these. But I decided to watch um, Invasion of the Body Snatchers from 1956, the original movie. Um, I gave it a four and a heart. Um, this was a fun watch. I liked seeing how this original story um, originated and then also just like seeing the original. I think I still prefer the 1978 remake, um, but I still liked this movie. It was, it was perfectly fine. Um, and it's cool. I mean, this movie, if you don't already know, it's about this, uh, it's about these aliens that come to the earth and they're replacing everybody, uh, with these emotionless duplicates. Um, and that's what's happening. That's pretty much the story. Um, this has been referenced in other, you know, media, of course, but the big ones are probably the faculty is one huge one. And it's also been remade three times. <laughs> um, so it's been remade. Uh, well, it was this movie that it was the 1978 one with Donald Sutherland in it. And then also Abel Ferreira did one in 1993, um, as well, which actually, Actually is coming out on November 1st on Criterion Collection, so go check it out. Um, anyway, so that's what I watched. I'm finally glad I got around to that. Um, so then the next uh, movie I watched that same day was for the category of elevated horror, um, quote unquote. And so I decided to watch um, a movie uh, from 2019 called Us, which is Jordan Peele's second movie he did. Um, 
I said I liked this movie better than Nope, actually. I'm a simple man, and when I see the new Peter Nyong'o, I have to watch it. Um, Us, for those who don't know, is about uh, this husband and wife, Gabe and Adelaide, um, who take their kids to the beach, um, and then some shit goes down when they find out that there are some weird visitors that look just like them, um, you know, ready to party. Uh, And I I thought this was pretty good. I I gave it a four, like I said, and um, like I said, I think it really goes for me that I like get out the most. I like this movie second and then Nope. I didn't love as much, but I did like this movie quite a bit. And I think it's worth a watch. If you at all are interested in Jordan Peele and you haven't already seen this movie, please get around to it because, um, and it was on um, Peacock. So that was really nice to have that. All these things were pretty much streaming. So I'm very happy about that. Thank you (laughs) for that October. Um, the next day, I uh, was tasked with watching a Friday the 13th movie, and so I decided to watch my favorite one, which, no surprise, is uh, I watched Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives, from 1986. So I I like this movie. I think it is one of the best movies in the franchise. Um, it's like that in Part 2 for me, personally. Um, I do plan on covering Friday the 13th as a franchise at some point, um, probably next year sometime, but it'll be really fun. Uh, but this is about, uh, Tommy Jarvis. Uh, he accidentally brings Jason back to life and then Jason is whooping people's ass. Uh, he's whooping these camp counselors ass at this camp with actual kids at it. Um, but then also Tommy is having to get back to put Jason in his final resting place pretty much. Um, yeah, I like this film. I do not have the box set or anything, um, for Friday the 13th, although I would like to get it personally. I think that'd be really great. But, uh, but yeah, no, I, I liked it. It's my favorite of the series really. Um, cause there are some not great films in that movie, um, series, but yeah, I decided to watch that because it was also Friday the 13th the day I watched it, which was great too. Um, and then, uh, I watched a movie, uh, for the category of 90 minutes. So I watched a little movie called Slither from 2006, which was on Peacock. So Slither, if you don't know, it's a James Gunn movie. Um, a small town is taken over by a alien plague, turning residents into zombies and all sorts of human, um, like mutant monsters. Uh, so this one for me, It was very okay. Um, I gave it a three and I gave it a little heart. Um, I do see why people would like it. However, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Um, Again, it was very aggressively okay. I was kind of, I was losing attention after a while. (laughs) But, you know, it was good. It was fine. I don't think I would own it necessarily. Um, It definitely takes some inspiration from like Night of the Creeps, which you already know how much I like Night of the Creeps. Um, But yeah, I I thought this was very okay. So that was Slither for me. Then the next day uh, I watched a little movie from, uh, I was was tasked with uh, doing Disabled Horror. So you could do a few different things with this, including Night of the Creeps technically, but I decided to watch, I decided to finish my watching of the Evil Dead series, and I decided to watch Army of Darkness from 1992, the year of my birth. And uh, yeah, so this movie, if you don't already know, it's about Ash Williams, as I said earlier, with uh, Evil Dead 2. He is transported back to 1300 AD, where he has to battle Army of the Dead and retrieve the Necronomicon so he can get back home. This is a Sam Raimi movie. It has Bruce Campbell in it. It's actually the film debut of M. Beth Davids, who is from 13 Ghosts and Miss Honey from Matilda and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I liked this movie. I gave it a three. Um, yeah, Army of Darkness is pretty pretty cool. Um, it's definitely some people's favorites for sure. Um, it was fine, I guess. You know, it wasn't anything too crazy or to write home about, really. Um but I thought it was fun. It was enjoyable. It was cool seeing like the medieval kind of way that they did things. Um, and how Ash would like interact with the medieval people, I guess. So that was kind of fun. So then I finished up the evil dead stuff, of course. So that was nice. So I think I've pretty much seen all the movies in that series. And then I have not watched the TV show or anything. Um, and I'm cool with just leaving it the way it is now. I don't think you need to make another evil dead movie personally, but that's just my opinion. Um, 
And then the next movie I watched, which was for the category of a Wes Craven movie, uh, was uh, The Serpent and the Rainbow from 1988. Uh, This is a Wes Craven movie. I've been meaning to watch this. It was on Peacock. So this is about a Harvard anthropologist played by Bill Pullman. He's sent over to Haiti to uh, retrieve a strange powder that is told that it could bring um, humans back from the dead. Um, And then a bunch of shit happens with like walking zombies, blood rites, ancient curses, things like that. Um, So for me, I liked this movie enough. I gave it a three. Um, again, I don't think I would necessarily watch it again. I don't really have the need to or have the love to. Um, th- some people really like this movie and some people are like, eh. I will say it was cool to see um, not white people um, on the screen for quite a bit because they're in Haiti. And so there's a lot of uh, you know black and brown people around. So that was cool. Um, you know, and I can see why this is a, an important movie of like, oh, hey, like, you know, you get to see not just white people, um, you know, which is cool. Uh, it was on like, uh, if you watch Hard Noir, the documentary about black horror, um, they do talk about the serpent and the rainbow a little bit. Um, and I think Wes Craven tried to make sure that he made some diverse stuff, especially since some of his things um, didn't always have like the most diverse casts, obviously. Uh, but he did make some movies like this and the people that are skit just this stairs and stuff like that. So I, I thought that was pretty, I thought it was a decent movie. I, again, I just didn't love it, but um, you know, your mileage may vary, I guess. Right. And the next day um, I watched two movies, of course. And so one was Australian horror. So I could have watched the loved ones for this as well, but um Australian horror. So I decided I didn't know what to watch actually. Um, so I actually went with the recommendation, um, cause the horror queers were giving out recommendations as well of what to watch. Um, and I went with a movie from 2007 called rogue. Uh, it is a crocodile movie. So this movie, it is uh, from the same guy who did Wolf Creek. Um, it was the director who did that, which is also a great movie. I wish I watched that actually too, but like, I didn't. Um, but this is about uh, a group of tourists that go into the remote Australian River Territory. Uh, I think it was the Northern Territory. And um, they get accosted by this enormous uh, crocodile. And then, you know, he's going to, like, kill some bitches, pretty much. Um, I gave this a three. Um, and I said in my review, I said at some point I was siding with the crocodile. <laughs> but, you know, it has, like, the... It has like the the final girl who's like the local, you know, to the to the area, uh, Radia Mitchell, um, who was in Silent Hill and other movies as well. Um, Michael Rotan's in this movie technically as well. Um, Sam Worthington, a couple different people, but um, yeah, this movie was fine. I watched it on I think Australian Netflix. I think I found it there. So I was able to stream it there, which was nice. Uh, I had my ways with, you know, NordVPN and all that. But yeah. So then I watched um, for the next category, which was a cabin in the woods horror movie. Um, I decided to watch a movie I had never seen before, but I finally got around to, um, which was Tucker and Dale versus evil from 2010. Um, so for this movie, I gave it a four and a little heart. Um, I said I enjoyed myself and, and this, with this movie, I thought it was really fun and campy and enjoyable. And I thought it was really sweet at the end too. So if you don't know Tucker and Dale versus evil, it's by Eli Craig. Um, it's about these two hillbillies who are suspected of being killers by these college kids that are camping near like a West Virginian cabin. Um, as the body count climbs, um, so does the fear and confusion of the college kids who are trying to seek revenge on the pair. Um, I personally really liked it. It was on Hulu. So that's why I watched it. But, um, I like I would own this movie. I think it is such a, it's so fun and stupid really. Um, but it is really enjoyable and and it is a horror comedy. Um, and I think it's a horror comedy done right. Personally. Um, I think it's still very sweet at the end. Um, Katrina Bowden's in it, um, which is really fun. She's the main, um, kind of final girl, if you will. Jesse Moss from ginger snaps is in there. He's kind of the villain, if you will. Um, Shalane Simmons, who was in like uh, the It miniseries as a little girl, and she was in the Carrie remake. She plays one of the college kids. Um, oh, fun little thing too. Uh, this guy Adam 
Boschne or something like that. I don't know how to say his last name, but he's Canadian. Um, if you want to check out on YouTube, if you're a fan of Are You Afraid of the Dark, um, he has reviews of episodes that he did. So if you look up like IOTA, like uh, are like the acronym of Are You Afraid of the Dark? If you look up that and just look up like reviews or whatever, you'll probably find this guy who was in Tucker and Dale versus Evil. He plays one of the college kids who like dies early. Spoiler, but. But yeah, no, he, it, it's very fun. And I, I that's how I knew who he was because I had found those like years ago. And um, he t- talks a little bit and like not even very much because he did these years and years ago. Um, the Are You Afraid of the Dark things. So I think he did that after probably around the same time, maybe perhaps. Um, but I think he mentioned at one point that he was in this movie, Tucker and Dale versus Evil, which again, I just thought was really fun. And, you know, I, I thought it was cool. I, I would give it a watch. I would definitely recommend it. Um, then the next day I chose a movie for the category of a movie where mom and dad are acting weird. So, you know, I am, um, you could choose a couple different movies from this. You could go with the parents or you could go with like some other weird shit. I decided to go with a movie that I think Kylie actually, um, recommended, uh, on her, her video, uh, was mom and dad from 2017. This movie is from Brian Taylor. Um, he is, uh, I don't really know what else he's fucking done. He did the crank movie. Apparently. I don't know what the hell that is, but he did, uh, this movie mom and dad. Um, so in a suburban community, these moms and dads, one after the other mysteriously feel the irresistible impulse to attack and kill their own offspring. Um, so it's pretty much moms and dads wanting to kill their children, um, and going about doing so. So it has Nick Cage as the dad, some Blair as the mom. Um, I was really into it. I gave it a three and a half and a little heart. Uh, it was on, I think Hulu. So that's why I watched it. Um, I love some of Blair personally. And, um, I thought she did a great job in this film being the mom. Um, I think she did really good and it's really it's really cool and tension filled. I thought it was a great movie. Um, I don't know how you'll feel about it if you're a parent out there at all, but like I really liked it and uh, it was, it was pretty decent. And then also a little fun thing is that, um, so there's a girl, Anna winter in it. Um, Anne winters is in it. She is from uh, like 13 reasons why I think she was in that movie or that TV show. Um, she's, done a couple different things but also Zachary Arthur who if you don't already know he's from Chucky um he did the Chucky TV series he's on it um and yeah he's in this but uh he's like a little boy in it so I thought that was kind of fun and cool but yeah so mom and dad I I would definitely recommend it I thought it was a good watch and uh it was enjoyable for me then um for the category that i watched of young adult um i decided to finally watch a movie i hadn't watched before um which was idle hands from 1999 so this is uh definitely a a time capsule of the late 90s for sure um and for this uh for that being said i enjoyed myself with this watch you know there is some stuff that's like a little like uh, you know, homophobic in it a little bit or whatever the hell. Um, and just like the whole Jessica Alba, uh, cause Jessica Alba's in this movie. Uh, the whole like, Jessica Alba little storyline that, that's there is a little weird. However, I think Devin Sawa does really good in this role. Um, and his friends are very bumbling, um, played by, uh, Seth Green and, uh, what's his name? Uh, Eldon Henson. He was, um, the he was Rachel Lee Cook's best friend and um she's all that if that's who you know that from but anyway so I also said they're probably secretly gay for each other personally um but yeah Idle Hands if you don't already know is about this boy um his name is Anton and he's a stoner um and pretty much what happens is that his hand is uh, possessed by the devil I guess (laughs) and so his hand is like doing bad shit and killing people Uh, That's all you need to know. So it's like, it's ridiculous and crazy. Um, If you're at all into a stoner comedy, like you could probably get into this. I liked this more than I liked dude wears my car. So I give it at least that. Um, 
also fun little thing too uh so this was shot in like california obviously um it was shot in i think the same area as halloween was uh, but also the gym that is in this movie that's for the dance it was also the same gym that was used in buffy the vampire slayer the movie and also jawbreaker um for their dances as well which i thought was fun but yeah idle hands that's what i watched then the next day i watched uh, a movie from the 1970s it was the the tasked thing to watch so i decided to use my netflix subscription and i watched a little movie called the sentinel from 1977 and i've been meaning to watch this movie as well um for me i gave it a four i gave it a little heart i really enjoyed the vibes of this movie i thought the last 15 minutes were like ridiculous and wild which i thought was really fun um the sentinel if you don't know it's about a new york model um she relocates to an apartment in a brownstone building where these other tenants are like kind of weird and crazy and whatever. She realizes that her building has like this sinister evil. It's there. Um, this is a Michael winter movie um, where apparently Michael winter from what I found out is a little bit of an asshole, but he did like death wish to the death wish movies and he did the Sentinel, like I said. So, you know, I thought this movie was good. Um, it was on who it was on Netflix. So I decided to watch it. And it's, it's wild. It's really wild. It gives me um, a little bit of Rosemary's Baby's vibes a little bit, um, but I, I definitely enjoyed it. So I would definitely give it a watch um, just just to put it out there. And, you know, uh, I thought it was I thought it was good personally. Then the next movie I watched was uh, a movie with a queer lead in it. So I decided to watch a film that had been um, recommended uh, by Haunted Hippie on her channel as well. Um, And it was a movie that is called What Keeps You Alive, which was on Tubi at the time I watched it. This is a Colin Minahan movie. So what it's about, it's about these, um, this married couple who is celebrating their for one year anniversary. They're a lesbian couple. They go out into the woods and shit goes down. Uh, That's all I'll say. And so this movie, for me at least, I gave it a three. However, I didn't love it, though, personally. Um, You know, I I love a good queer movie. I love a movie with a queer lead. I think there's better films out there, personally. I think this is a wild ride, and I did enjoy myself mostly. I did wish that this movie was directed by a woman, personally. Um, if you don't already know Colin Minahan, he's directed a couple things like this movie. He's also the Grave Encounters guy. He directed that movie. Um, if you don't already know... Oh, he also did Spiral. He wrote Spiral. Uh, okay, there you go. Um, if you don't already know, like What Keeps You Alive has these two women in it who are the, the married couple, um, one of whom is... Uh, this Hannah Anderson girl, um, really good actress, and then Brittany Allen, um, who's in it as well, who is also literally, I think, married to um, Colin Minahan. So, you know, that's how she probably got that role, honestly. Uh, Anyway, but yeah, I mean, it was fine. Like, both of these people were strong actresses. I do kind of wish that they were maybe made by, I don't know, like, played by real queer people, because I don't think either one of them are. Um, But they play it, and that's that's cool, I guess. But, again, this movie was fine. It was perfectly alright, but... I probably wouldn't own it personally. I don't think I'd watch it again personally, but I would say at least watch it once. See what you feel about it. See what you like about it. It's crazy as shit, but yeah, I I personally was not thrilled with it, but that's just me. Um, Then the next day I did the category of zombie. And so of course there's plenty to watch um, here. Of course you could watch Little Monsters from the, you know, Lupita Nyong'o is in it. And you can watch all the different zombies. So I decided to actually uh, come back and watch a movie that I was meaning to watch. Again, this is a movie that I tried watching before and I just gave up on it for a minute. And it is uh, Zombie Flesh Eaters, also known as Zombie 2 from Lucio Fulci from 1979. Um, And so this guy goes out to this Caribbean island with this woman. They're trying to figure out about what's going on in this fucking island. And then they come across these uh, zombies that are kicking everyone's ass pretty much. Um, 
So this is a Fulci movie. This is uh, right before he did his Gates of Death trilogy, I believe, um, which has the Beyond, the House by the Cemetery, and um, that other one. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, the Beyond, the House by the Cemetery, and then uh, what the fuck is that other movie? Oh, my God. Yeah, the Beyond, the House by the Cemetery, and then... Oh, God, now I have to look it up. (laughs) Um, I'm keeping this in, by the way. I'm not really doing much in terms of... Oh, City of the Living Dead. That's what it is. Duh, Jesse. Anyway, those are great movies, by the way. But this one is right before that, and I thought it was was decent. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I gave it a three and a half. Um, It has eye trauma, like Fulci gives us. It has a zombie fighting a shark, you know? Lots of boobs. You know, so there you go. That's that's what we get when we're watching a Fulci movie, really. Uh, but yeah, so I watched that. And then the next day, or the next movie I watched, uh, was a paranormal movie. So again, all sorts of ghost movies you could watch or any of these types of things. But I decided to watch a movie uh, that's kind of in my childhood a little bit. Um, I watched Ghost Story from 1981. Um so this movie, it is a John Irvin movie. It's about these four men who are the Chowder Society, like four old men. Um, they, what ends up happening is one of the sons of these men, um, one of the twin sons of these men, um, dies in this weird accident. There's some shit that goes on um, where there are some secrets that happened in the past, pretty much. And things are all coming to light now. Um, I really liked this movie. I gave it a four. I gave it a little heart. It has like Fred Astaire in it, Douglas Fairbanks Jr. is in it, Craig Wasson's in it, Alice Krieg, uh, all sorts of people. So I really liked this. Uh, this is a movie where I I guess that my grandparents um, had this movie at some point in my childhood because I remember seeing it on VHS before. I think it was like the TV edit or something that they had. Um, anyway, but they had this so for some reason on video. I don't know why, but because um, my my grandparents, from what I remember, um, weren't like the biggest horror people or anything. Like it's not like they watched horror movies a lot or whatever. But yeah, they they had this. Um maybe it was because of Fred Astaire or something like that. I don't really know. But um but yeah, so I decided to to watch this and I'm glad I did. I thought it was a good movie. It's 80s movie and I thought it was like really fun personally. So I I really liked it and I would definitely recommend it. And it was it was streaming this month. Um no, I don't think it is anymore, but um, I think it's probably leaving Prime, but, you know, definitely watch it. I would definitely give it a watch. Then the next film I watched was for the category of horror comedy. Um, so this was, uh, I decided to watch something that was on my Tubi list forever. Um, and I decided to watch the movie called Call Girl of Cthulhu from 2014. This is a movie that's by Chris LaMartina, who's actually a local filmmaker in Baltimore. Um, he has been a part of doing, he his most well-known thing he did was the WNUF Halloween special, which was on Shudder for many years. It's not on there anymore, but you can still find it from him. He, you know, if you give him money, I'm sure he'll actually send it to you. Um, <laughs> you know, so that's cool. But yeah, and he is, um, yeah, he's done that, which is like super cool. Um, and again, he lives in Baltimore, so I thought that was great. I tagged him in my post about that, uh, that I was watching it and, you know, had to give some props, of course. But this movie is about, uh, this artist who falls in love with a call girl. She, uh, she finds out that she's the chosen bride for the alien god of Cthulhu. And then, um, this artist has to stop an ancient cult from summoning their god and destroying mankind. This movie is fairly low budget, I think. Um, however, it doesn't feel like it's low budget, though. Um, I gave it a three and I gave it a heart. I really did like this movie i didn't love um wnuf um i didn't love that movie it's like a but it's a different kind of movie it's not like a normal ass movie really um but i have watched this before and so i did like it though um i liked call girl with cthulhu enough um more than i liked wnuf halloween special personally um 
And again, I got to give some credit to a guy who's literally like working out from Baltimore and just making the damn thing happen. And he's had this, you know, thing that he did, which was super cool. Um, and got to gotta give some props to him. So for sure. I, I would check it out. It's on Tubi. Like, you know, if you like this kind of like blood, guts and ass type shit, uh, you might get a kick out of it. I, I think it's worth a watch at least. And then the next movie I watched was for the category of a John Carpenter movie. So I decided to, because it was on Criterion Channel, I decided to watch In the Mouth of Madness from 1994. I gave this movie a three and a half and a little heart. I really did like it. So this movie is about... Um, this guy, um, John Trent, who's played by Sam Neill with his crazy eyes, he is um, sent to investigate the disappearance of this Sutton uh, Sutter Kane um, horror author. And they end up in this little him and the, um, one of the publicists or whatever. Um, they end up in uh, this little town called Hobbs End and shit goes crazy in this movie. Um, I did like it quite a bit. John Glover's in this movie, a little fun thing. Um, I like seeing him because he also is um, either from Baltimore or he went to school here, um, and I am aware of him. Uh, he actually used to teach uh, acting masterclass over at Towson University, which was really cool. Um, he's been in all sorts of shit, but he was in Smallville, this movie, um, oh, all sorts of things. So I, I like it, personally. Um, I like this movie quite a bit. I, I have been... You know, going through John Carpenter's filmography a little bit, he is a good director. I do like some of his stuff, which is cool. But like, um, I thought this movie was really decent, and I I'm glad I watched it finally. So it was good. Then on the next day, I watched a um, movie for the category of 65 to 70 minutes. Um, so you can watch a couple different things from this. Um, but I watched a movie called Freaks from 1932, which is also a Todd Browning film. The same guy who directed Dracula. This is a movie where it's about a circus shides show uh, where um, this guy, this little little person, he decides to marry the leader. Um he decides to marry this like trapeze artist and then shit goes wrong pretty much. And then, um, the freaks rise up or whatever. That's pretty much what happens in the film. Um, yeah, it's, it's only like 66 minutes, so it's pretty easy to watch. Um, and I thought it was pretty good. I gave it a three and a little heart. Um, it's also in criterion, um, it's also in criterion, um, collection. I think they're just releasing it really soon. I don't know if I'd own this movie necessarily or I would pay the money uh, for the criterion of it unless you really like it. Although I do think it is coming with other movies. So I don't think it's just Freaks. I think you get other movies in addition to Freaks. But again, that's just me personally. But I do like this. It's a really weird movie. Um, it's a little, you know, early movie as well. I would give it a watch at least. You know, you can find it probably pretty easily to, to watch it. So. I thought it was really, really fun, personally. Then the next movie I watched was for um, a horror anthology movie. So I love horror anthologies, personally. I could have waited to watch uh, um, VHS 85 on this one, but I didn't do that. Um, but in this movie, I decided to celebrate Christmas a little early. And I watched a movie called The Christmas Horror Story from 2015, because it was on Shudder. Um, and so this movie... Um, if you don't already know, so this is about this um, town of Bailey Downs, which, yes, it's the same place where um, <laughs> Ginger Saps is set. Uh, it's because the guys who directed this movie, um, it was a duo, uh, Brett Sullivan, he directed Ginger Snaps 2, and Steve Hoban produced a lot of those Ginger Snap movies. So uh, they had like literally like two or three different directors. They had three different directors on this movie, and literally all of them were somehow involved with ginger saps they're all canadian as well this is also a very canadian movie but anyway i um i did like this though i really enjoyed it personally um i gave it a four like you know it, maybe it's not everyone's cup of tea but like uh it's these three different stories that all come together at some point and i thought it was a really i thought it was a decent horror film and i thought it was um i, I could definitely understand watching this uh, at christmas time um and I think it's worth a watch. You know, if you have Shutter at all, um, definitely give it a watch. <clears throat> definitely give it a watch. Um, but if anything, I, I would definitely um, 
I, I would recommend it for sure. I think it's a fun one. Um, it doesn't overstay its welcome too bad. You know, it's only about 99 minutes, so it's a little over an hour and a half, but it's, it's worth it. Um, then the next, uh, two films that I watched are, uh, not horror films. They're just a pure joy. Honestly. Um, I watched sister act and sister act two back in the habit. Um, this is because I am going to be covering the sequel on the show, um, later on. So be on the lookout for that. But I watched sister act and sister act two. I both gave them four and a half stars and a little heart. Um, if you don't already know what sister act is about pretty much, um, Dolores Van Cartier, um, played by Who- Whoopi Goldberg, she witnesses a murder and the cops stash her in a nunnery where she learns about herself, she learns about the other nuns, and she is able to help the nuns learn how to sing. That's the first movie. <laughs> it was directed by the same guy who did Dirty Dancing, um, and unfortunately passed away in the early 90s, um, but, you know, I loved this movie so much, it's on Disney+, Plus, and I thought it was great. And then um, Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit, came out a year later, um, directed by Bill Duke, who is a director, um, an actor turned director. Um, and again, Dolores is asked to um, come to San Francisco and to um, be the music teacher at a inner city school, pretty much. Um, and it's a great film. Um, we're covering this on the podcast, um, as you know, in, uh, in a few weeks. Um, so again, be on the lookout for it, but I just love this movie so much. I thought it was such a good film personally. Uh, I think both of these are so good and, and, you know, sister act two, especially they, they're, oh my God, I had horrible reviews, which I didn't understand. Cause I'm like, this movie is literally not that bad. Like, it, I don't get it. Like the first one it obviously did well, but like the second one, it got this shit from critics or whatever, but I don't, I don't get it. Um, it's fucking stupid personally, but whatever. It's fine. It's not fine, but whatever, whatever. I'm, uh, I'm just saying like, I'm mad that like they, the critics didn't appreciate this at the time. And I think more so critics are now, um, of the now maybe uh people i think audiences like this movie more so that's that's me and then uh, and so then of course i watched two movies after that as well because i still had to do these uh for my challenges i was doing um so one was a movie with a scary clown so of course there's plenty of things to watch for this i could have watched all Hallows eve or all Hallows eve 2 i'm sure um which were on shutter uh, but I decided to watch a movie um, called Stitches from 2012. This is a uh, Irish film, I believe. Um, it's directed by Colin McMa- uh, McMahon, I believe. McMahon, whatever. Anyway, this movie... Uh, so he's also the same guy who did Let the Wrong One In, which is on Shutter right now. It's like a vampire movie. Um, this is about Stitches, who's like this uh, clown... Um, he accidentally dies at this, uh, kid's birthday party and he comes back from the dead and he whoops these kids asses years later. Right. That's pretty much what this movie is. Um, I gave it a three personally. I, uh, I thought it was fine. You know, um, it's very Irish obviously. And so that's, that's fine. Um, but I also, cause so is, uh, let the wrong one in too. Um, I haven't finished that one yet, but I did start it. So I'm going to get back to watching it again, but I really did. I liked it enough. Um, I thought it was fine. Um, I don't think I would watch it again necessarily, but I did tend to enjoy it. Um, I thought it had like a, a fun, it kind of had a fun premise to it. And uh, yeah, it's, it sure is shit is with a scary clown. So I'll give it that much. And then the next day, or actually the next movie I watched um, was for black horror. So there's uh, a couple different things you can watch for this. Um, and so I decided to watch an oldie but a goodie and one that I will soon be owning myself. Um, and I do plan to do on the show at some point. It is Tales from the Crypt presents Demon Knight from 1995. If you don't already know, this is a movie by Ernest R. Dickerson, who was Sam, uh, Spike Lee's, um, Sam Lee, <laughs> Spike Lee. Uh, it was his um, director of photography pretty much. And he became a director. He also directed Bones. He directed this movie. Um, just cool guy. 
but this is about um yeah the collector played by billy zane he is chasing this guy breaker played by william sadler um it's kind of this cat mouse thing they end up in new mexico this abandoned ass like church slash old church slash like hotel thing brenda backy's in this movie um from death spa Jada Pinkett, before she was Jada Pinkett Smith, was in this movie as one of the first black final girls ever, which is really cool. And she kicks so much ass in this movie. I love it. I gave it a four and a half. I love this movie. Um, I'm going to be owning it soon. I got the, um, in addition to buying Ginger Snaps, I also bought Demon Knight as well on Blu-ray. And I just fucking love it. I think this movie is so good. I think I ended up finishing this. I, I think I started on Saturday. I finished it on Monday, I think, because I was off on the Monday that I watched. I was off on the next Monday. Um, so I was like, okay, cool. But I watched this and I just love it so much. I, I think this is also like streaming as well before. Um, so you could find it pretty easily. Um, I would definitely rent this if anything. I, I just thought it was so good. Um, if you're a fan of Tales from the Crypt, it's definitely a must watch. Um, and also, even if you're not somebody who loves Tales from the Crypt either, um, I definitely think it's it's worth a watch. And it's the best one. It's the best film that they made, really. But yeah. The next movie I watched was for the category of Canadian. Um, and so I decided to watch a movie on Shudder that I had uh, be, been aware of or become aware of, uh, which was 1981's 1983s, sorry, um, Siege from 1983. Um, this movie is about a police strike in Nova Scotia, and this these hoodlums uh, pretty much kill these uh, people at a gay bar, and this guy runs out of the gay bar, and he holds up in this apartment with these other people as well. And it's pretty much like gay people and allies of gay people um kicking ass against like these fucking fascists pretty much um and what's not to fucking love about that you know um this is very canadian of course a very low budget but it really does such a good job with like you know uh with really stretching out that budget for sure um i thought it was i thought it was fucking great uh what i think is really fun about this movie is it's very Canadian, but uh, one of the guys in it, so Daryl Haney, who plays Chester, one of the gay dudes, um, unfortunately, spoiler alert, he dies in the movie, but uh, he actually wrote uh, Friday the 13th. Um, <laughs> he wrote Friday the 13th Part 7, funny enough. Uh, so he wrote that movie. And he's been in a couple other random movies, like Extra was one. Oh, apparently he was in the Unborn from the early 90s. What the hell was he in that? Huh. Well, that's funny. He's a police officer in that. Anyway, um, I want to do the Unborn on the show. That movie is fucking crazy. There's like early Kathy Griffin in it, and like Lisa Kudrow is in it for like a scene, and then like Brooke Adams from Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Oh my god, it's crazy. Anyway, Siege. Um, that was him. And also, fun little thing, Brenda Bazinet is in this movie. And if you don't know who Brenda Bazinet is, she is the mom from um, The Haunted Mask One and Two. She's Carly Beth's mom. And of course she's Canadian, so but it's so cool to see her as a young woman here. She's like, you know, yeah, it's crazy. Cause I only ever knew her from Goosebumps. I only never knew her from those two things I watched so fucking much. Uh, I'll get to it in a minute. But but yeah, so that's what I watched personally. Um Siege is pretty good. It's on sh- um Shutter right now. Uh, I think it was on Severin or Arrow or one of those released it. Um so you may be able to find physical media of it, but I would definitely give it a watch. It was pretty great. Then I watched um a movie set in the 80s. Uh so plenty to choose from here. But I decided to go with Slaughter High from 1986. This is a movie that had three different directors in it um for it. This is about eight people who are invited to their 10 year high school reunion. Um, and then a former student who was disfigured by a prank gone wrong is there to seek revenge. This is a movie that was uh, shot in England um, and all English actors pretty much, but they're all trying to be American. And so it was a wild ride. Um, I gave this a two and a half. I didn't love this movie necessarily. And Pickens, when I told him was very upset with me. Oh, <laughs> But it's fine. I I just didn't love it. It was on um, Tubi, so that's why I watched it. 
and it's set in the 80s. I was I was getting around to it. But again, I could leave this movie. I, I didn't love it necessarily. There are some fun parts in it, I guess. But overall, I, I just didn't love it necessarily. Um, also, it ended up looking like, I don't know, like it's so weird how it looks sometimes. Not in a horrible way, but like there is a point where I'm just like, are they just shooting on a literal handheld video camera at one point? Like, but that's just me personally. <laughs> But yeah, Slaughter High, that's what I watched. Um, the next movie I watched uh, for the next category, which was another horror movie directed by a woman. So wanted to do that. And I decided to go with a movie that is on Shutter, And it is a Mexican movie. It's called Tigers Are Not Afraid from 2017. So this movie, it's about a um, these kids who are kind of um, street children. So they um, don't have parents. They're orphans. Um, and they are trying to survive um, the violence of these cartels um, and the ghosts that have been made because of these killings of the drug cartels in Mexico. Um, this is Issa Lopez who did this. And I thought it was great. I gave it like a three and a half personally. It's very heavy personally, but I do think that it is worth a watch. Um, There are some horror elements in it for sure, but I do think that overall I did like the film. Um, It was on the last drive in with Joe Bob. So you can watch there as well. Um, a little long for me, kind of, sort of. Um, although, actually, no, it isn't. It's 83 minutes. What am I talking about? Um, but, yeah, I, I thought it was it was pretty decent. If you're at all interested in, like, Pan's Labyrinth, for sure, if you're into that kind of dark, um, you know, magical realism type stuff, um, I would definitely give this a watch, um, for sure. Um, and it's Mexican, so it's Spanish, and, you know, I, I always am interested in foreign cinema i can always get into that generally because i always like watching things that aren't necessarily from america but yeah so that was what i watched and then the next movie i watched was uh for the category of college slash university so there's a couple things i could have watched from this um but i decided to watch a movie that was on tubi um, it's called Soul Survivor from 2001. So Soul Survivor is about um, the this college freshman who's in a fatal car crash. She's played by Melissa Sage Miller. And she um, discovers that she may have not survived when she becomes caught between the worlds of the living and the dead. And like all this shit. I did not like this movie. I gave it a one. Um, I said that um, this movie makes Urban Legend look and feel like a five-star masterpiece. And it really does. Uh, Like this movie, I just don't think hit the mark. I think Elijah Duscu deserves better. And also Melissa Sage Miller deserves better. Um, Sean Carpenter, who's the director of this, apparently is not a great director. Um, He wishes that this was Jacob's Ladder, but he misunderstood the assignment. Um, Stephen Carpenter, like I said, he was the one who did this movie. Um, He's only done like uh, the Dorm to Drip Blood. He did a movie called The Kindred. Um, and he did this movie. So I did not like this. Um, it is Casey Affleck's in this movie. Wes Bentley's in this movie. I think Casey Affleck has went on record and said that like he hated doing this movie. So I'm glad I watched it on Tubi. It was the PG-13 cut because there is like an unrated, like R-rated cut or whatever. Um, but I didn't love this personally, so I would not recommend it personally. That's me. Um, but I'm glad I watched it because I tend to be into teen horror type stuff. I, I get into that kind of thing. I love teen movies, so I decided to go with this. But, ugh, God, it was horrible. Anyway, so then also uh, the same day as a weekend, I think, um, I watched... Uh, because it was on stars. I think, um, I watched the blackening from 2022 last year. This is a Tim story movie. Um, this is about a bunch of black friends that uh, reunite for a Juneteenth weekend getaway only to find themselves trapped in a remote cabin with a twisted killer. Um, I gave this a four and a heart. I loved this movie. I would probably own it. I think this movie is so, it was so well done personally. I think that it really, Um, is a comedy horror movie, really. Um, It doesn't ever get too slapstick, though. It doesn't really go into scary movie territory. I think it toes the line just enough where it's super funny, it's very 
specific to the black culture, obviously, which I, I really liked. Um, and yeah, I love that this wasn't made for like, you know, I don't know. I liked that it wasn't made for white people really, <laughs> you know, it's cool. Um, but it could also, you know, if anything, it could still be something that everyone can enjoy, especially if you are a horror fan. I do think that there is some, there's something to be said for that. Um, so, but yeah, the whole point is that like this movie is about these black friends who get together and then have to fight against, you know, uh, this crazy shit that's going on. So I really liked it. And also fun little thing too. the guy who wrote this movie, it was, um, so the writer of this movie and one of the producers as well is in the movie. Um, Tracy Oliver, who did girls trip and, um, a couple other movies as well. She's well known. Um, but Dwayne Perkins, who is in the movie as, um, Dwayne, um, he is one of the producers of the movie and he's also a writer on it and he's a gay guy. So got to give it up for the gays. Um, you know, writing a cool little movie and also getting it out there and, you know, all that good shit. So I loved that. That was really nice. But I really liked the blackening personally. I would definitely give it a watch. We're coming up into the last few bits. So we got um, the next category I uh, watched for was for a movie that a gorehound would love. And this movie, I decided to uh, watch The Ruins um, from 2008. Um, it's based off of a book and it was directed by Carter Smith, um, who's a gay guy. Um, this is about uh, Amy, Stacy, Jeff, and Eric. They have to um, pretty much fend against evil plants that are on a Mayan ruin in Mexico somewhere. Um, that's pretty much what it's about. Um, and it's fucking crazy, dude. Um, in my review, I did say fuck uh, Jonathan Tucker for asking for leniency for a rapist. Disgusting. Um, if you don't already know Jonathan Tucker, who is the lead of this movie pretty much um him and jenna malone kind of are but uh he is morgan from the texas chainsaw remake and all that but he asked for leniency for his friend danny masterson so hate anyway so but whatever other than that though this was a fun time it was gory i did generally like it i gave it three and a half like i said um and it sure was gory. There were there were some gory parts. So I I am um, I'm glad I watched it. I like Jenna Malone. You know I like her as well. Uh, also Sean Ashmore's in this movie too. So I always love looking at him. But yeah, I I do I did like this. Um, and I would recommend it if anything. It could be super fun. <laughs> um, and then. The next movie I watched as well was uh, for the 90s, so all sorts of things you could watch for this. But I decided to watch, because it was on Tubi, um, House on Haunted Hill from 1999, which is the remake of the original movie. Um, if you don't already know, this is about these people who are brought to a house on, I, I suppose, a haunted hill. Um, and they have to spend the night there, and they can win a million dollars if they spend the night. But they got to deal with all the crazy bullshit ghosts that are happening throughout this. Um, so I liked this movie enough. I gave it a three. Um it is a remake of, of course, it's Dark Castle remake. Um, so it was perfectly fine, you know, perfectly all right. Um, and it does give me a little bit of 13 Ghosts vibes. I mean, I will always love 13 Ghosts, but uh, this movie was also good. Like, it was fine. Um, and I think that it's definitely worth a watch for sure. Um, there are some good actors in it. Um, some of the dialogue is really just pulled right from the original, which I do like the original quite a bit. Um, but yeah, so that's what I would say with House on Haunted Hill. The next movie I watched was um, for ghost movie so another kind of paranormal ghost movie but i watched a movie that is on stars right now i think um it just recently came out it's called summoning sylvia from um, 2023 um this is about a gay bachelor party that turns spooky when sinister spirits are suddenly summoned um try saying that like five times fast jesus christ um i actually heard about this from kylie from haunted hippie and yeah, this movie is fucking kind of, it's fun. Like, it's a three-star movie for me. It has Frankie Grande in it as one of the friends. Uh, Travis Coles, um, who is the main guy. He's married to Michael Yuri in the movie. Um, and they're going to be getting, well, they're going to be getting married, actually. They're fiancés. Um, 
anyway, so yeah, this movie is like kind of crazy. Um, and you know, cool, I guess, whatever. Um, very much like it doesn't surprise me that the uh, one of the guys who did this movie, if I'm not mistaken, um, he actually, I think, was in the SpongeBob SquarePants musical, apparently. Oh, he's Plankton from that. Okay. So one of the guys, the Plankton guy from the the SpongeBob SquarePants musical, apparently, uh, he directed, he partly directed this movie. So that's kind of fun. Anyway, I think, if anything, for this film... Um, <laughs> if you're gay, watch this movie because you'll probably get a kick out of it. There is some gay sex in it a little bit, which is fun. Um, and there's a drag performance in it somewhere. It's ridiculous and crazy, but you know what? It gets in, gets out 70 something minutes. You know, it, I will say I did not watch the horror movie Fire Island with Jonathan Bennett in it. I turned it off after like five minutes. This at least, even though this movie may not be the best, perhaps. However, I think if you take it for what it is, it's a super fun little movie to watch. And I actually don't think it's that bad. It's a little bit more of a comedy than anything. But I do recommend it for for the homos out there, for sure. For sure, for sure. Anyway, so then... um. The next movie I watched was for a movie that was set in a single night. Um, so I decided to go with uh, a movie from A24. And this is uh, Green Room from 2015. This is about a punk band that becomes trapped in a secluded venue with a bunch of neo-Nazis pretty much. And they have to like fight against their shit. Uh, there are some people who really love this movie. They say it's so tension filled and I get it. It has Aaliyah Shaw cat in it. It has, um, Anton, what is his name? Anton Yel- uh, Yelchin in it. Rest in peace. Imogen Poots is in it. Um, Patrick Stewart, all these people. So, uh, and people say it's like really tension filled or whatever the hell. I personally gave it a three. It was fine. It was perfectly all right. But I also was, like, kind of bored at some point. I just was not really into it at some point. So I was like, meh, I'm good. Um, but it's, it's, it's fine. Um, again, it could be very, if you put yourself into it, it's tension building. It's anxiety inducing, all that stuff. But, again, I, I mm, yeah, whatever. It was, it was fine. Um, but you know what? I then cleansed my palate, though, because the next day um, I watched a movie that was about witchcraft. That was one of the categories. And I decided to finally watch a little movie called Practical Magic from 1998. This movie has Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman in it playing sisters, uh, pretty much the Owens sisters. Um, they uh, they can't get a man because if they get a man, like the man dies. And then um, some shit goes down with one of... Um, Jillian, played by uh, Nicole uh, Kidman. Um, Sally is uh, Sandra Bullock. But anyway, so Jillian gets with this guy and like some shit goes down with him. It's a whole thing, y'all. Um, but this is on Hulu and I decided to watch it. And I gave it a four and a star. I will say at first I was like, oh my God, what the hell is this movie? Like, is this even... What is what? What is it that people are so like up about this movie or whatever, right? And then I was like, oh, wait, no, this is actually, like, kind of fun and silly. Um, It's just, like, so over the top. It's a little campy. Um, I have questions about some stuff. But, like, overall, I did enjoy myself with it. Um, So I would definitely give Practical Magic a a shot, if anything, if you you want to. It might not be for everybody, but, like, I will say that overall I did tend to enjoy it. Um, And the next movie I watched as well... um, was for experimental slash a short film. So I decided to heed the horror queers suggestion and I watched a little short call tonight. It's you. Um, and this is on altar, um, pull up on altar, um, on YouTube. They have like horror, horror short films. This one's 18 minutes. Um, this is about a guy named CJ who uses a hookup app to meet with a guy named Hunter. And then some shit goes down. Um, I thought this was actually a pretty decent little short, 
Um, you know, gets in, gets out. It's like less than 20 minutes, but it's, it's real good. You see Dick in it, which is really fun. And, and some guys fucking a little bit. That's great. Um, we support that here on the cult cinema circle podcast, but, uh, you know, I, I thought it was fun. And obviously this guy, I'm pretty sure is queer. Um, I would think he is. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, why not? Like that's, that's cool. Uh, oh, apparently he made a thing called tonight. It's me. Huh? He made a little short with that too. That's kind of fun. Oh, cute. I love that. I hope he had to make a really gay horror movie at some point. I really do. Good for you. Dominic Haxton. Haxton, whatever your name is, sorry. Uh, like you're listening, okay. But anyway, so uh, the next day, um, which was a, was it a Friday? Might have been a Friday. I don't remember. Anyway, uh, the next day I watched um, one of the categories was a TV episode. So I did myself a favor and watched two TV episodes. Um I watched both The Haunted Mask and The Haunted Mask 2 that were on Netflix. Um, So I just watched both of those. Um, Obviously, it's like 40-something minutes for one and the 40 minutes for another. So that's pretty much a movie. Um, And yeah, I mean... I can't rate these on Letterboxd because they're not on there, which is unfortunate. But, um, of course, five stars for both of them. Um, they're both amazing. Uh, and when you're hearing this, you, of course, will hear my my Haunted Mask episode that I did. Um, I decided to do that for Halloween. Uh, but I love this movie. I love those little episodes so much. Um, they are part of my childhood. They are part of my upbringing. So I, I have to stand. And it's unfortunate that I do not have a haunted mask mask in my possession. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on getting one of those. Anyway, so then in addition, though, with TV episodes, uh, I also watched um, a movie. Uh, it was a Who Done It. Uh, that was the category I was to watch. And so I watched a movie called No Exit from 2022, from last year. Um, this is by Damien Power. Um, he directed a couple different things, I guess, but this is kind of his most known thing now. It just came out last year. This is uh, a movie where it's about this girl who is coming out of rehab. She comes across this like visitor center in the middle of a blizzard. And what ends up happening is she figures out um, or she finds that there's a girl in a, one of the vans in the parking lot. Um, there's a kidnapped girl and she's trying to figure out who is um, who's the who's the kidnapper pretty much. And, uh, you know, this movie, I gave it a three and a half. I would waffle between that and a three. Um, this movie is perfectly good. It's very mean. I will say that. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's out there, girl. It's out there. But, uh, but overall, I, I did tend to like it, really. But also, I can see why some people don't like it as well. I kind of get it. But I do think it was pretty decent, for what it was. Um, I wish it was a little itty bit shorter, just a little bit. Um, but overall I did tend to like it. Um, the guy from the alt state commercials, uh, Dennis Haber, Haysbert, um, is in this movie and, um, a couple of different people are just in it. And so I, I really liked it or I did like it at least. Um, I think it's worth a watch at least, you know, if anything. So, um, yeah, I would give it three, three and a half, probably something like that. Uh, we're coming up on the end almost. So then the next day, um, the category was to watch a Scooby-Doo movie. So I decided, of course I could have watched the original Scooby-Doo, obviously, um, from 2002, but I decided to watch the sequel. So I watched Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed from 2004, which I never saw before. And so I gave this a three and a half and a star. This movie is by Raja Gosnell, who did the first movie as well. And pretty much Mystery Inc. Um, they are like going to this grand opening of this like exhibit of all these villains that they caught in the past. And then some shit's going down. And then the gang has to get together to like fight these monsters pretty much. Um, so I gave this movie like a three and a half and a star. I really liked it. Um, I just said in my review, big Matthew Lillard energy, of course, cause he's an amazing shaggy. Um, I too would also be head over heels for geeky Seth green. Um, cause he's in this movie playing the love interest of Velma. 
And then um, I also said, I think I need to add Seth Green and Matthew Lillard to my crushes up there with David Krumholtz because they are both so hot. Um, ugh, anyway, sorry. But like, yeah. But that was um, that. was that. So Scooby-Doo 2, Monsters Unleashed is what I watched for the Scooby-Doo movie. Um, I was thinking of maybe doing one of the... the um, I was thinking of maybe doing one of the other ones, but I didn't. Um, then the next movie I watched was for the category of queer horror. Um, so there's plenty to choose from from here, but I decided to watch a movie that was free on YouTube. Um, also because I asked, I asked Scott from the movies that made us gay. I was like, quick, you know, what movie should I watch as a queer horror film? And he was like, the covenant from 2006. And I was like, bet let's do it. So, uh, the covenant, if you don't know, it's ready Harlan. He, um, it's these four young men who, um, are witches pretty much. And they have to fight against this other bad witch person or whatever. Um, it has young Sebastian Stan in it, Laura Ramsey from the ruins. Um, a couple of different things in it. People, um, I didn't love this movie. I gave it a two. <laughs> this movie is very, um, in a weird way, it, it's a little homoerotic. I don't think it realizes it is. Um, but it is super fun to watch as a queer film um, because of just the homoerotic kind of undertone to it. Um, and yeah, it's just boring mostly, really. Um, it's not that interesting, but whatever. Uh, yeah, but that's what I watched for queer horror personally. Uh, then the next day, um, I watched, um, so the category was a movie from your childhood. So I decided to, I was going to watch Phantom of the Megaplex, uh, as what I was planning to watch, but I decided against that. And instead I watched Halloween two Calabar's revenge. Cause I did want to get a Halloween town movie in there. Um, and I loved this movie. I gave it a three and a little star or a little heart. Um, letterbox, just put in stars or whatever. That's fine. Um, yeah, put in like a, a actual big star or something. I don't know. But, uh, anyway, I guess they already use stars, but whatever. Um, yeah, no, but this is the sequel to Halloween town one, uh, pretty much Halloween town is in danger because, uh, this guy Calabar, who was like this dude, he's a villain, um, brought back kind of sort of through familial ties and uh, everyone in Halloween town gets turned boring. Um, and then, you know, Marnie Kimberly Jane Brown has to save everybody. You know what I mean? I also love that this is the movie where she and her now, I think boyfriend slash maybe fiance met uh, Daniel Kuntz um, who plays um, Cal in this movie. Um, but yeah, I mean, this has like Debbie Reynolds in it. It has Judith Hogue from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies. Um, it was directed by Mary Lambert, which I thought was pretty decent. Who also did Pet Cemetery. Uh, but yeah, I, I this is a movie from my childhood. I I loved the Halloween Town movies. Um, I remember watching like Halloween Town High a little bit and watching this and the other this and the first movie. I definitely watched and also Phantom of the Megaplex. But yeah, I definitely ended up watching that. Um, then the other movie I watched was for day 29, uh, which was Spanish. So I watched a Spanish horror movie. So there's a couple I could choose from for this, but I decided to go with the last matinee from 2020. Um, this was, uh, in, I think Argentina or Uruguay or something somewhere like that. And this is a movie where it's pretty much a, uh, a girl um, is working in the projectionist booth for her dad um, and pretty much uh, these people who come to a horror movie, they are getting killed off one by one and she has to try to save them pretty much. Um, it's very Giallo inspired for sure. Um, there's definitely some good gore in it. There's a lot of eyeball stuff. I give this a three personally. I mean, I liked it enough. It was fine. Um, I don't think I would own it or anything, but like, I honestly, I thought it was a fun time and I thought it was good. Um, I could see their influences and, and all that good stuff, but, uh, overall it was, it was perfectly all right, but it wasn't anything to write home about for personally for me. Um, but it's on shutter. You give it a watch. If anything, I thought that was pretty, pretty fun. Uh, then the next movie I watched on the next day, this is on the 30th. Um, you're hearing this on the 1st of November, but I'm recording it on Halloween. Um, so then 
I watched a movie that had a category of elderly, so you could watch a bunch of things for this, a couple different things, but I decided to go with The Visit from 2015. Um, this is one of M. Night Shyamalan's movies. Um, it's about these two kids who are estranged from their grandparents because of their mom, and they go up to Pennsylvania to see them, and they find out that their grandparents are acting very odd and weird, and that they gotta try to get themselves out of it. Um, and of course, there's a twist. Um, but yeah, the visit I thought was pretty, really good. Actually, I gave it a four in a heart. I loved this movie. It was such a good wild ride. I thought the acting was really decent in it. Um, I liked everything about this movie personally. I'm not much of an M. Night Shyamalan person either. Um, I like the sixth sense. I like this movie. I don't really watch a bunch of his other movies, but okay. But there's that. Um, yeah, no, I, I loved the visit personally. I was really down for that. Then I watched, um, the category was a movie in the Halloween franchise. So of course, I watched Halloween from 1978. Um, this is about uh, Michael Myers coming back to Haddonfield to wreak havoc on the small community after he killed his sister 15 years ago. Um, and a girl named Lori Strode has to, like, try to be his ass, pretty much. This is pretty much basics. Um this movie is a five star movie for me. I don't know why I don't own it, but I wish, or I probably should. Um, it's so good. Like this is the best Halloween film in this franchise. Um, I have seen all the other Halloween movies in the original franchise. I have not seen the David Gordon green ones, except for the first one. I saw the one with the 2018. Um, I haven't seen the Rob zombie ones really. Um, yeah, and I haven't seen Halloween Kills or Halloween Ends, but I've I've seen all the other Halloweens in the original franchise, and I mean this is just the best one. I mean, really, like it just is. There's no contest to me. So you know that's what I watched on All Hallows Eve. You know the day before, um, and then the day of when you're hearing this, um, I watched three movies. So. I decided to watch The Monster Squad from 1987 because I thought for some reason it took place on Halloween, but I don't actually know if it did. Um, so I couldn't really watch it for that because that was the the thing was it takes place on Halloween. Um, so this is about it's a Fred Decker movie. It is um, the guy from Night of the Creeps who directed that um, pretty much Count Dracula with like the Wolfman and the Mummy and Frankenstein's monster and the like Gill man or whatever. Um, they come to like wreak havoc, um, on this town and they're trying to like, you know, do all this crazy shit in the monster squad, which is like a bunch of preteen boys and a little sister. Um, also, uh, they're trying to whip these uh, monsters ass pretty much. Um, yeah, this movie, I, yeah, I thought it was, it was fine. It was a three for me. I gave it a little heart. I do like, it's a cult movie for sure. I do want to cover it on the show, maybe. Um, I thought that would be really fun um, because it, it has a cult following for sure. Um, and I I do like it. I don't think I liked it as much as Night of the Creeps personally, but I do like this enough. Um, and I do think that it's worth a watch for people. I think it's super fun. Um, it's 80s. It, you know, has all sorts of, you know, different uh, things going on in it. Um it's not super boring or anything. So I appreciate that. Um, and then the other movies I watched. So I watched one movie, um, which was for the category of 2010s. Um, so I watched mayhem from 2017, which is on shutter. I think it's on um, TV sometimes too, but I watched this movie. It's by Joe Lynch, um, who has a movie coming out called suitable flesh, which I do want to see. I haven't seen that yet. But this pretty much is about a virus that spreads through an office complex um, that causes white collar workers to act out their uh, worst impulses. This movie for me, um, I gave it a five before when I watched it. I would probably give it a four and a like now. Um, I still love this movie. Um, I think it's such a great dark comedy. I think it is. I like Joe Lynch's movies personally. Um, and he also seems like a really nice dude. So I am a, I'm a fan of all that. And I personally think that... Um, yeah, this movie is so like anti corporate, uh, kind of anti capitalist, <laughs> you know, it is, uh, it's a wild ride, dude. And it's so crazy because like, yeah, it's very much just like, you know, if you hate your fucking job or like, you're just like, yo, fuck the, 
to, to fuck everything or like fuck the you know fuck the culture of work and you know fuck capitalism and all that watch this movie because you might get something out of it it's like super fun there's this comedy in it it's still really brutal i feel like so i just think it's super fun and samara weaving and steven yoon are just such a great uh pair in this movie personally i thought they did such a good job um and then also, so the last thing I'm watching, um, which I actually now own, which is really nice. Um, it's a movie that takes place on Halloween um, as the category to finish this all out. And I'm finishing it out with a little movie from 1988 called Night of the Demons. So this is a Kevin Tenney movie, the guy who did Witchboard. Um, this is about these kids, 10 kids, I think it was, who are going to this um abandoned funeral parlor to go party um and pretty much uh these demons come and whoop their ass pretty much uh this is a quintessential 80s movie i think it is such a good film i've given it a three and a half before i'd probably bump that up to a four um i really do think this movie is good i just recently watched it because it was on shutter with joe bob um they they did something with this so i now own it on blu-ray so i'm gonna watch it on blu-ray uh but yeah i really liked this personally um when i watched it before and i'm sure i'll enjoy it um watching it on halloween of course uh but yeah totally um and that is what I watched in the month uh, in terms of movies. Um, and then in terms of TV or anything, I really didn't have a ton of time to watch TV because I was watching a bunch of shit this way. Um, however, I did watch most of the Goosebumps show that came out on Disney Plus and Hulu. And I will say, I don't think I love it. I see what they're doing and I at least appreciate that it is something a little different than what was normal, but I also just feel like it's just not for me personally. Um, I feel like it's just taking something that is like a, a known IP and just kind of throwing it and being like, Hey, like here's goosebumps, but it's just not, it, it, that's the criticism. I think a lot of people have is that it doesn't feel like goosebumps. Um, and it kind of doesn't, I just don't quite get why they would do this and still call it goosebumps, but I also understand why they're doing it. So I just think it's like mid personally. I literally got up to, um, I have to watch the, I got to the dummy episode. And so then I got to watch the one after that and I'll finish out the series. Cause why not? But I don't want it to get renewed personally. That's just my opinion. But you know, what do I know? But I, uh, but that's what I watched for the month of October. So I hope you enjoyed hearing about this. It was almost a good two hours that I've been talking because I watched a goddamn lot. Um, but I hope you guys have had a wonderful October. I hope, you know, you've had a good spooky season, if anything. We're going into, you know, November and December. So we're going into like Thanksgiving and Christmas territory. Um, so I have some fun things kind of planned out as well. Um, but yeah, if you want to, tell me what you watched if you want. Um, tell me if you watched anything fun. Um, give me any recommendations you might have or any of that kind of stuff. But until next time, uh, thank you so much for listening to this episode and to the podcast in general. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.